Hello everyone, in this video I would like to show you how you can create a hideable sidebar in Blazor. This is basically a follow-up to my previous video in which I did pretty much the same thing but using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So I'll basically be trying to replace the JavaScript part with C Sharp Blazor. And just to make it a bit easier, uh, I'm going to be using portions of this code so I don't have to write everything over from scratch. But if you want a more detailed explanation of what's actually going on, I suggest that you check out my previous video. But without any further ado, let's uh, go to Visual Studio, File, New, Project, I'm going to look for something called Blazor WebAssembly App Empty Template. Uh, if you don't see it here, just type Blazor and hopefully you'll see it somewhere here. Um, at least if you've updated your Visual Studio to include .NET 7. And by the way, this should work with Blazor Server as well with almost no changes. Okay, so let's click Next. I'm going to name it hideable sidebar underscore blazer. Go ahead and click next.net7. And I'm leaving the default settings. Let's hit create. And actually, this uh, template is not completely empty. So let's go to app. CSS and just delete this code. We don't really need this. It's like the the app wide uh, style sheet. Okay, so let's leave this empty for now. Let's go to index and we have to uncomment this part. Of course, delete this. And by the way, I think this is the only difference between uh, Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. In the case of uh, Blazor server, you would have to go to the file called underscore host.cshtml and that's where you would have to include this line. But I think that's pretty much the only difference. All right, so uh, we're going to go to pages and index.razor where we have the hello world example. And let's go back to uh, Visual uh, Studio Code. And I'm going to use this for for the entire app because uh, um, uh, the main component is actually here. So it's not inside the index file. So we have to, um, or we need something that is um, above it in the hierarchy of those style sheets. Yes, and this enables us to use file scoped style sheets. That's why we had to include that. Uh, but let's go back to the HTML part. And I'm going to put it inside the index razor file. We can safely remove the JavaScript part because we won't be using it. Okay, so as I said, the main component is here, so we don't have to copy this part because it's already there. All right, so uh, let's add a new file here, new item. Uh, CSS style sheet. It's called index razor CSS to match the naming convention. And we can add it here. Go back to Visual Studio Code to grab this part. And copy it over over here. 
right so hopefully it can work already let me just delete the part that deals with errors because we've already deleted the corresponding part from the app.css file and let's try to to run it and see what happens okay so we have <laughs> this website here that looks like the previous one actually it just it doesn't really work yet so let's and get it to work uh, let's go back to a visual studio index and we're gonna write some code basically just define uh, a field called a private field called is sidebar shown and by default it's going to be true so if this is shown we're going to say is sidebar shown if it is then don't add the don't add the hidden class if it's not then go ahead and add it so and pretty much the same thing we're gonna do it with the arrow as well just remember the space here to separate it from uh, the first class name so if you perhaps remember from the previous video I had something called arrow reversed so we're gonna replace the hidden part with reversed and hopefully now if you apply the changes Hopefully it's gonna work. I'm not sure if it had done it yet. Uh, oh, actually I forgot one thing. Well, one important thing, we have to have an on-click event to actually change um, the state from true to false or from false to true depending on whether it's hidden or not so you're going to create a lambda function over here that will change it to to the opposite so is sidebar shown equals the opposite of is sidebar shown so let's try to apply those changes and hopefully it will work now okay so the sidebar is working what about the arrow uh, I, I didn't include the space which is important because there they get like something like arrow reversed as one word so um, hopefully if I if I apply those changes now it's uh, gonna work properly all right so as you can see it's working um, and if you remember from the previous video I defined the like a root property here to define the width of the sidebar but actually we could do it in a way that I would call more blazer like so let's remove this part and let's go ahead and create a component that is actually called sidebar so we're gonna grab this code from here 
and put it over here. Of course, we don't have uh, this uh, uh, field here, so we have to define a public parameter to get that from the parent, which in this case will be index.razor. So parameter um, and let's call it is shown because we now know that it applies to just the sidebar. So is shown instead of is sidebar shown. All right, and another property or parameter to define its width. Okay, since we uh, kind of want to define its width and pass it uh, in the parent component, we're going to define the style for the sidebar in the same file. All right, so let's go back to index razor CSS and I'm going to take the part that applies to the sidebar. Copy it over here and instead of this, of those calculations, I'm going to say well, the at symbol and width it's going to be in pixels as well copy the same thing over here and instead of margin left done this way we're going to have minus width in pixels all right so now let's go back and use this component in our index razor file so sidebar is shown will depend on the value of is sidebar shown and the other parameter its width so like before we can say for example 400 uh, we have to start it over hopefully it works as well so as you can see now it works um, we can for example change it to 500 let's try to apply the changes and it works as well so basically that's it for this video um, as I said if you want a more detailed explanation of what's going on in terms of CSS uh, you know HTML and so on please check out my previous video I'll try to link it down in the description uh, as well as the source code for this video so thank you for watching I hope you found found this video hel helpful and Bye.